and so. Good, you're here. I've just been on the phone to the Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, and he has informed me that he wants your training to start straight away. Now, as you'll know, we are on a complete lockdown. That's to be expected because it is wartime. I want to thank you so much for volunteering with us to be our new recruits. While the battle continues in the, in the Atlantic Ocean, we remain undetected beneath the streets of Liverpool. When people think of war, they think of gunfire and they think of soldiers. But the work we're doing here at Western Approaches revolves around monitoring convoys that are in the Atlantic Ocean. Now a convoy is a group of ships that are travelling together for safety. And they are bringing in vital supplies to the country. The biggest battle that we are facing in this wartime is a battle for supplies. We need to make sure that people are fed and we need to make sure that people are safe. Now I work here as a RENF, which stands for the Women's Royal Navy. There were about 80% of the people who are working down here are women. And they are either a REN or they work for the Women's Auxiliary Air Force. There are about 300 of us who work here. For you to be successfully inducted to work with us at Western Approaches, we need you to complete a number of training sessions. Now these training sessions are going to cover things such as evacuation and rationing and wartime work, because it's important to remember all of the things that are going on during this time. If you successfully complete these sessions, you will be rewarded at the end and you will be welcome to join as part of our force. Now, our staff here can be quite strict, so we want to make sure that you are following along to everything that they're saying, but we want to have, give you any opportunity to ask any questions about the work that you'll be doing down here. Your first lesson is going to be with Lieutenant Commander Roberts. And he will hopefully be able to answer any questions and tell you about the work you'll be doing here. But if you do miss any of our training sessions, you don't need to worry about that. Because we've been told that there is something called the, the internet, which must be an invention from Bletchley Park, that you'll be able to catch up on all of these sessions. So let's get you started. Um, I want you to make sure you're all stood up straight. I want you to get all of your shirts tucked in. Okay, everybody, let's just do a check. Okay, and we can begin. So follow me down the stairway. Be careful on the steps, as we've got a lot of you to get down here. Remember to listen to anything that the lieutenant is telling you. Thank you, Commander Roberts. Ah, Ren First Officer Fisher, thank you very much. Ah, hello, yes. Ah, these are the new recruits then. Yes, um, not, a, not a bad bunch. Um, I'm sure you'll, you'll do fine. I uh, can see brothers and sisters, some of you. Um, Lucy, James Evans, I can see uh, some from Wirral Grammar School. Um, Woodsley Primary, do we have anybody? Good. And Longton Lane, I believe. Good. And I know we've got lots of other people um, around, um, we'll get to some of you later on, hopefully. Right, my name is Lieutenant Commander Roberts, and I'm going to be responsible for your induction training today. Um, I believe First Officer Fisher has told you about the worksheets. Um, you can be completing those as we go now, or you can complete those at a later date. That's fine. And I know she's also told you about any questions. We'll get to those later on, so that we don't get any interruption now. Right. So, Western Approaches Area Headquarters is a secret underground headquarters um, here under Derby House in the centre of Liverpool. It's combined headquarters for the Royal Navy and the Royal Air Force uh, and is responsible for all the shipping and the aircraft that are crossing and involved in the Battle of the Atlantic at this moment in time. Now I can see we've got some boys of the Royal Navy ratings, good, we'll get to you later. Uh, Wrens, Women's Royal Navy Service, good, welcome girls, and Women's Auxiliary Air Force, good, nice to see you girls as well. Um, some of you 
So you just need to uh, sort out your uniforms, but you can do that later, see the quartermaster. All right, so Western Approaches, area headquarters, covers the whole of the North Atlantic. All of those ships that are operating in convoys, leaving from Liverpool, from Glasgow, from Londonderry in Northern Ireland, and heading off to places like Halifax in Canada, New York in America, to Gibraltar, to Africa, and right the way around to India, picking up supplies, food, oil, weapons, men, tanks, all of those things that we need to bring back here to carry on the war and defeat Hitler and his Nazis. 60% of all the supplies that this country gets come through Liverpool docks. That's why this place is so vitally important. Now, all of those ships and aircraft and all of us working here are under the command of the Commander-in-Chief, Admiral Sir Max Horton. Um, we'll come to him later. He's a bit of a stickler for things, but I'll talk more later about him. Right. We weren't always here. Um, some of us were down in Plymouth, where Western Approaches headquarters used to be. But in February 1941, we moved up to Liverpool. And there were two reasons for that. One, because Liverpool was such an important port, the second largest port of the British Empire at that time. Um, the convoy routes were going to be based from here, so it was important that we were close to those convoy routes. But also, in early 1940, we were under the threat of invasion by the Germans. And Plymouth was just too unsafe. So we moved up to here, one, to avoid the invasion, that never happened, thankfully, but two, um, to try and avoid the air raids. And sadly, we know that wasn't effective, and Liverpool suffered quite heavy in the, the recent blitzes. Right, anyway, let's move on and get on with your orientation tour. Follow me. Now, this is our operations room. This is the heart of what we do here at Western Approaches. Some of you, Wrens and WAFs, you will work in this room. Um, some of you will be handling signals from the ships and the aircraft and passing them around here. And others of you, you'll be working as the plotters and you'll be plotting the pins on that map behind us. You'll be using those ladders. There. Those ladders move backwards and forwards so that you can reach all of that map. Now remember, the map shows the whole of the Atlantic. You can see Britain and Europe over on the right-hand side here. And over on the far side, you can see America and Canada and everything on there. Okay? Right, so on that, what have we got? Well, we've got lots of things. We've got an up-to-date picture of what is happening. Okay? Um, and obviously, one of our most important things is to watch out for the U-boats. Fight our war against the U-boats who are trying to sink all those brave merchant ships bringing all the goods for us. Um, you do all know what a U-boat is, don't you? Yes, right, good. German submarines. Pride of the German Navy and the scourge of the Atlantic Ocean. Right, let's take a closer look at the map. Now, if we look here, you can see exactly what I've been talking about. So here we have a symbol for a convoy. That convoy there is ONS-5. It's on its way from Liverpool, having left in mid-April 1943, and it's now heading across to Nova Scotia. You can see that it's had a bit of trouble on the way. You can see the convoy, the white square with the arrow on it, and those little coloured tags, those indicate the ships, the destroyers, the escorts that are with it for protection. Sadly, those white markers are the ships that we've already lost. So those are merchant ships that have been sunk already. But good news, those red broken submarine shapes, those are the U-boats that we've sunk. So that's good for us. The yellow ones are the U-boats that we still know are there, but we don't know yet exactly where, and we haven't managed to sink those yet. But there's time, there's time. Also on there, we've got a couple of aircraft from the Royal Canadian Air Force. They're there to add protection. Now, air cover is vitally important. And also on there, you've got some wind markers showing the wind speed. We'd have sea conditions on there showing what the sea is, whether it's calm, whether it's rough. And also the lines showing us the routes that those convoys have taken. This is updated every four hours, unless urgent signals come in. So if you're working in here, one of your jobs would be to update that regularly. Now, let's have a bit of an update onto where we are as far as the war is concerned. 
Being honest, up until the beginning of 1943, we were losing the Battle of the Atlantic. The Germans were sinking far more ships than we could build to replace them. Our supplies were running dangerously low. We were in, within days, in some cases, of running out of oil. The Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill, he quite rightly said that this was the most important thing. This, the Battle of the Atlantic was the most important thing in the whole of the war at that time. From the beginning of 1943, though, things have begun to change. And we've managed to start turning the tide now against the German U-boats. There are four reasons for that. One is the closing of the air gap. Now, the air gap is a big hole, if you imagine, in the middle of the Atlantic where we couldn't put any aircraft. Now, aircraft are really good at attacking U-boats because they can catch them by surprise and they can force them to sink or they can force them to just dive underwater. Now, you might find that surprising, but U-boats spend most of their time on the surface because they can go faster and they get fresh air and they need to recharge their batteries. They only sink to, for, to protect themselves or to attack. The aircraft are vitally important. And in 1943, our long-range aircraft from the Royal Air Force, the Royal Canadian Air Force and the American Air Force were managing to cover almost the entire Atlantic, which gave us extra protection. Secondly, and some of you may have heard of this, have you heard of Enigma? Yes, yep, Shh, don't say too much, it's still top secret, remember. The Enigma code. The Enigma code is the German code that they use, the German machines that they use to pa pass messages between the units. Now, we were fortunate in, in 1941 to capture a German submarine with an Enigma machine on board and all the code books. Now, that meant that our brave men and women at Bletchley Park could crack those codes and develop machines to be able to intercept those messages, read them, and then pass that information to us here at Western Approaches. That means we can act on that information and be ready for the U-boats when, when we know they're going to attack. Now the third thing is another thing that's happening above us and almost happening above us right now. And that's we have a special training school and some of you Wrens might work in there because the Captain Roberts who runs the school, no relation, but Captain Roberts who runs the school has a staff almost entirely made up of women in the, of the Royal Navy service, the Wrens. And they are there to train our Royal Navy and Allied Navy officers in the tactics, techniques, needed to effectively sink and attack the U-boats. And we've been developing those on and on as we've gone through, all from experience of the sea captains out there coming back and telling us what we need to do. Now I said that training school is in the top of the building above us, and some of you women there, you'll be working in there, no doubt. Lastly, and this was uh, brought in by Sir Max Walton, our, our Commander-in-Chief, and that's the support groups. Their, ships, their groups of ships are about six or eight warships, and their job is to patrol the Atlantic and when they receive signals from convoys that they are under threat or that we expect U-boats to appear in a certain area, those support groups rush to the area and they are there to hunt and to kill those U-boats. They're not there for just protection of the convoy, they're there to actively attack the U-boats. Now some of you might have heard of uh, Captain Walker, Johnny Walker, that's it, yes, Captain Walker. Now he obviously is one of our most su successful um, group captains there, leading his ships out of Gladstone Dock in, in Bootle, just up the road from here. And do you know he sank six in one journey alone? Six U-boats. It's a record. It really is. Right, enough talking from me for the moment, I think. I think it's time you get a bit of familiarisation with this room. So have a look, wander around, have a look at the things on the desk. Do remember, though, you have all signed the Official Secrets Act which means that anything you see in here can only be shared amongst those of us who work at Western Approaches. So when your induction is complete and we've got you on board as fully fledged members of staff here, you know, you'll be fine, but just don't tell anybody else. All right? Have a look around.
right, I think, uh, I think we just need to check one other thing for you lot. I um, know you're all quite a favour with this, but this is one of our hotline telephones. This is one of our emergency telephones. Any time this rings, that certainly means that there's something important coming through. So if you're at this desk, this is the one you need to be focusing on. Um, so just quickly run through. I know, I know you probably know how to do it, but um, if it rings, pick it up. Talk into there. Listen to there. If we need to make a call, again, we just pick it up and we dial a number. Okay, so if we're dialing a local number, there we go, and speak into there. All right, everyone happy with that? Good. Okay, um, I think we're probably done in here. So let's make a move through. Um, follow me, guys. I know there's a lot of you, um, so try and stay close, and we'll make our way up through here. First off, Fisher, everything okay? Now, one of the most vital things that we obviously have to have here is we have to maintain a power supply. Um, we can't afford to have electricity power cuts. During the Blitz um, here in Liverpool, lots of the power lines were cut and it was a real risk that we might lose power. But fortunately, Western Approaches Bunker here in the headquarters were designed for that and we had a backup generator. Now, ironically, that generator came from a First World War German submarine. So the war against the U-boats now is being fought and powered by the engine from a German U-boat from the First World War. Ironic, isn't it? Anyway, must move on. Now, if you'd just like to file around that way, that's it. Good. Good. Now, when you do start work here, um, this is where you will come through, this is the main entrance, and you will come past the guards who will be sitting on this table, not, not entirely sure where the guard is, he should be here now, um, but you'll have your pass, and as long as you've got your pass, you can come in and get on with your work. Please don't forget your pass, um, these guards are armed, um, and they won't let you in if you don't have the correct pass. Right, um, make a hole there, make a hole, you need to come through, thank you. Now, um, you will be working down here on shifts of 72 hours long, yes, three days, three days. You won't be working all that time, you'll do a 12 hour shift with a four hours on, four hours off. Now, uh, when you're off, you will obviously have the chance to relax, you'll have the chance to sleep, and you'll have the chance to eat. Now, if you're sleeping, these are the types of beds that you'll be sleeping in. Um, isn't room for one ev for everybody, I'm afraid. Um, so when it's your turn to get into bed, you'll find that it's nice and warm because somebody will have just got out of it. And when you get out of it, somebody else will be getting into it. Now, there is a war on, so we're not going to be changing and washing sheets every time. So uh, apologies if they're a bit smelly. Um, we said we'd be eating down here. There is a canteen, um, and being in the Navy the Air Force, we don't have to worry too much about rations, um, but rations will cover next week, and that will be part of your thing for next week. Um, so there's plenty of food. It's not particularly great quality. If you want good quality, you need to go out onto the streets from Liverpool and find yourself a little cafe there, but you will need to obviously pay for that or use your ration coupons. Um, so it's not great quality, but there's lots of it. Whale meat is quite a common one. Um, anybody tried whale meat before? Yes, yes, you're right, it is rubbery, isn't it? Yeah, never mind. Okay, right, let's move on. I think for now we're going to move on. I think the Admiral's out at the moment, so we can carry on through here. So follow me again, guys. Now, this is the office of the Commander-in-Chief, Admiral Sir Max Horton. Now, he's away at the moment, he's out playing golf, and uh, yeah, I know, I know, it sounds a bit strange in the middle of a war playing golf, but we'll come to that um, in a moment. So Max Horton um, is a very experienced and very knowledgeable Royal Navy officer, in fact, probably one of the most knowledgeable in the entire Royal Navy. Um, he's one of our best. And he's proven that in what he's done before the war, in the First World War, and what he's doing now for us 
in the Battle of the Atlantic. In the First World War, Admiral Horton, he was a submarine commander. He captained the submarine and actually he sank the first German U-boat, um, the first German ship, in fact, um, of the, the First World War. Now, he can be a bit severe at times um, and don't expect him to necessarily be worried about being polite and everything. Um, and he does expect his staff to work as hard as he does. Um, just make sure you know your stuff and you'll be fine. If he asks you questions, know the answer. Okay? That's all I'll say. Now, so Max spends most of his time down here. He doesn't really use his apartments upstairs. Um, you can see that he's got his bed here. All right, so he spends his sleeping time down here and obviously his office space here. Now, don't be surprised to see Sir Max down there in the plotting room in his pyjamas in the middle of a crisis, shouting his orders um, and demanding answers to questions. Okay. Now, let's have a look at his, at his desk. This is quite interesting. On his desk now, Sir Max needs to be in communication with everybody. So you can see he's got two telephones. He's got a switchboard because he's got direct lines to the Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill, um, to the Admiralty down in London, and even to Washington DC. Right? Direct phone lines here, secret phone lines, so he can talk to as many people as possible. Um, also, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, the golf balls. Okay. Um, now, with the golf, Sir Max works really hard, but he also understands the need to relax and to, if you like, reset the brain. So Sir Max every day will go out and play golf, usually at the Royal Liverpool, um, over in Hoyt Lake or in, over in Formby as well, he's been known to play. Um, he does it every day, he usually grabs one of us on our day off um, to go and play with him. And to be honest, it's best to let him win, although it's not easy to beat him either. Um, so he goes off, plays there, comes back, and then he's ready to carry on the war. Most of the action in the Atlantic is actually happening at night. So most of the time we need to be on, on our toes and he needs to be around is at night. So that's when we need to, to feed him to there. Right. Um, I think that's probably all. So I have some questions from recruits. Ah, thank you. So we've had some, some questions from you. Good. Right. So what jobs um, would us girls be doing at Holly Sims? Holly Sims from Wavertree. Well, as I said... You will either be serving in the Women's Royal Navy Service, which is known as the RENS, or you'll be serving in the Women's Auxiliary Air Force, um, the WAFs. Now, most of you, when you join those, you're only going to be 18. You can't join before 18, um, so maybe some of you actually on your 18th birthdays, you would have found yourself in those units. Simple uniform, simple training, and then sent to some places like this. Now, you could be a plotter on those ladders, plotting things onto the board there. You might be a coder, which means that the messages, the radio messages that come in, they're going to be in code. And it would be your job to decode those messages into English so that we can pass them around so we know what's happening. You might be a messenger, and your job would be to carry those vitally important messages around the building. You might actually be a radio operator, taking Morse code messages and writing them down. Um, and you might be on the teleprinters, sending important vital messages. All of those jobs may seem very simple, but in wartime they are vitally important. And those are vitally important cogs in our big machine to win the Battle of the Atlantic. Let's see. Um, why is Western Approaches in Liverpool? And that's Leighton McKibben, aged eight. Very young recruit. Good to see you starting early, Leighton. Why is it in Liverpool? Well, there are two reasons. The first one is the docks. The docks in Liverpool take over 60% of all the supplies that are coming into Britain at the moment for us to fight the war. Even before the war, Liverpool was the second biggest port in the whole of the British Empire. Only London was bigger in handling more goods. But also on the other side of the river, We've got immense shipbuilding with Camel Laird. So we've got Camel Laird, and they're churning out ships almost on a weekly basis. Yeah, new merchant ships, new Royal Navy warships. 
to make sure that we can fight. So that's the first reason. The second reason was for safety reasons. They thought when they moved us here in February 1941 that we would be safer from German air raids. Sadly, in August 1940, the first air raids begin to happen over in Birkenhead on the other side of the river. And a week later, Liverpool suffers its first air raids. And they carried on for a while. January 1942 was the last one. We were almost two years of air raids. I can tell you it wasn't necessarily a pleasant experience being here at that time. Have there been any casualties in the building? And that's from Scott Davis or Davies. Scott, yes, sadly we have suffered a casualty. Um, we're not on the front line, but it's still accidents can happen. Um, and we did lose one of our WAFs quite recently, um, and that was Patricia Lane. Sadly, Patricia was a plotter, so she was on the ladders. She was at the top of the ladders one evening, and. An urgent signal came through that had to be plotted. And the wren, bless her, ran to the bottom of the ladder, grabbed the ladder to move it to where she needed it, and she didn't look up. Patricia sadly fell from the top, landed on the floor. We rushed her out as quickly as we could, but sadly we couldn't save her. Um, we do have a little memorial plaque to her. I mean, you can only imagine the, 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 how the poor wren felt. She's, she's not been back at work since. But also, there is a war on. And when there's a war on, we need to step up and we need to carry on. We can't afford to let things like that get us down. We need to be positive all the time. And that's what we've been doing here. We've been positive and we've moved on. And as I say, we remember Patricia Lane for her sacrifice. Um, right, so I think that's probably about it. Let's just quickly summarise what we've looked at today then. So, the role of Western Approaches. Western Approaches Command, Western Approaches Headquarters is here in Liverpool and we are controlling and running the convoy system between Britain and all those countries that are helping suppliers, the vital suppliers, to win the war. We're also controlling all the warships there and fighting the war against the U-boats. We're here in Liverpool because it's close to the biggest port, it's close to the convoy routes, and it's a lot safer than it was being on the south coast. What can you girls do? What can you women do? Well, the role of women in our war now is vitally important. There are hundreds and hundreds of jobs in the Navy, the Army and the Air Force that you can be doing to free up those men to be fighting on the front line, to be in those front line ships, to be in the aircraft, to defeating those Germans. So that's what the role of the women is. You are vitally important. And even if... Some of you, you know, you've got sisters, you've got mothers, those people who are staying at home, just looking after the families, just keeping our country going, those are just as important as those that are in the services now. And finally, the Battle of the Atlantic. What is the Battle of the Atlantic? Well, it's an ongoing battle. The first ship was sunk on the 3rd of September, 1939. Yep, yeah, that's right. Just hours after we declared war on Germany, the poor SS Athenia, carrying women and children from Liverpool to Canada, was sunk. And we've been losing ships every single day almost since then. But as I said to you downstairs, we're turning the tide. It's May 1943 and we are beginning to turn that tide. Times were hard and we got some really dark moments, but we got to that point and we're now on that downward curve, we're now on the winning side and we are going to win this war. We are going to win the Battle of the Atlantic and that will give us the, the, the opportunity to further the fight against the Germans. Right, well, that's about all from me. Um, Ren Fisher! I think we're all done in here. So, recruits, over to you. Thank you. Well done recruits. Um, the commander seems very, very pleased with the work that you've done today. Remember, if you want to do any further work on the training that you've done now, remember you can complete those worksheets. Our next training session is going to be on the theme of rationing, and that's going to teach us how we survive in wartime with limited supplies. We want to thank you all for your commitment and for your hard work in these very trying times. We know 
know that we are asking a lot of you to be cooped up down here when you would like to be out with your friends and with your family, but there is a war on. We are all working against the same enemy and the easiest way to overcome a common enemy is to work together. So let's keep calm, carry on and let's win this battle. Thank you recruits, you can see yourselves out.